The Big Oops, Anatomy of a 35 Year Mistake by Casey Muratori at the Beta Software Conference 2025. 2 hours, 27 minutes, and 33 seconds. Ain't nobody got time for this, so here's the too long didn't watch summary. Casey claims that the way object oriented programming has been pushed as a compile time hierarchy of encapsulation that matches the domain model was a mistake and a much better approach is possible and could have been invented as early as 1963 if people were paying attention. But we had to wait for a game company called Looking Glass to invent it in 1998 by creating the first entity component system. So 1998 minus 1963 equals 35 years. Casey isn't saying that OOP is bad, but that compile time hierarchy of encapsulation that matches the domain model is bad, because the domain model might not make sense for the computational version. We don't need to have a model of a thing, but we can have something that gives the end user the effect of that thing. That quote that someone in the audience referred to as dark OOP is a modified version of the quote, a compiled time hierarchy that matches the domain model by Mac, who worked at Looking Glass and also plays games on YouTube. Casey added the encapsulation part because encapsulation is what determines whether the code is easy or hard to write. Putting the encapsulation boundaries in the right place is what we really care about when we're doing architecture. It decides where we make it difficult to access things and where we make it easy. But Casey asked himself if he can actually say that dark group is bad since everybody is pushing this. Then it probably means that some very smart people came up with it for good reasons. So Casey fell into a rabbit hole and started reading everything he could to understand where these ideas came from. You look at several people and try to understand what they were working on, what they were thinking about, what kind of problems they were trying to solve, and who they got their ideas from. So he explored two branches. The first one starts with C++. Before making C with classes at Bell Labs, Bjarne Strostrup worked on distributed system and wrote a simulator in Simula. He liked how he could directly map the domain model to classes. He also liked the type system and the ability to catch type errors. But the implementation of Simula didn't scale and the whole project came close to disaster. It is clear that Bjarne was deeply inspired by Simula to develop C++ and he actually learned Simula by talking to one of its creators. Simula was created by two operations researchers in 1962. They focused one on using inheritance for code reuse and following the domain model with classes. They were working on simulating a tall booth on a bridge with a queue of cars, trucks and buses. The idea of subclasses used in Simula actually came from a paper published by C.A.R. Orr, aka Tony, in 1966. In this paper, he talks about the idea of subclasses appearing in the real world. What's interesting is that this paper also discusses about a concept similar to a discriminated union or a tagged union. This idea was actually implemented in Simula through the inspect statement but was not introduced in C++ because Strostrap thought it would broke modularity. But it doesn't end here. Tony actually got some of his ideas after he worked with Douglas T. Ross on the Algol 68 committee. Doug worked on a sort of computer-aided design application for the Air Force at the MIT Servo Mechanism Laboratory. And in 1960, he came up with a type of generic structure he called a plex. At that time, nobody was thinking about the concept of a struct, but he did. The second branch case he looked at is the one of Alan Kay, who developed Smalltalk and is considered to be one of the father of object-oriented programming. Alan Kay got his ideas from Simula and from Sketchpad, which he described as probably the most significant single thesis ever done. Sketchpad was a pretty advanced drawing app created by Ivan Sutherland for his PhD in 1963 at the MIT Lincoln Laboratory. And guess what? Ivan Sutherland and Douglas T. Rust worked together, so Sutherland used some of the ideas of Rust to implement Sketchpad. After spending some time understanding how Sketchpad was made, Casey realized that he could draw a diagram that looked a lot like an entity component system. But people at the time didn't pay too much attention to it, or they thought it was a bad idea. So, yeah. That's basically the talk, an overview of the history of how object-oriented programming became what it is today and how things might have turned out differently. Alright, alright, alright. If you like this type of videos, tell me in the comments if I should do more. 
Otherwise, you can fuck off respectfully. No, no, I'm just just kidding, just kidding. Thank you for watching. You know what to do. Or else, uh, nothing. Subscribe, like, comment, donate. Don't do anything. Just donate. You know, just, yeah, do do that.